hey guys welcome back to another video so in today's video we would be working further in our 3d systems and today we would be building this uh, carousal component this is a custom carousal component so we would be building this from scratch or we would be just modifying up the requirements so that it would be easy for you all to understand also so uh, let us say what it is like uh, this component is developed by some other person that is working uh, in your uh, uh, in your department only or in your team and what you are to do is like you are to uh, make changes on this component let's say that person is on leave so you are to make uh, changes over to this component so what you would do what would be the steps that you would be uh, performing in this component and how you would be dealing with things uh, we would be dealing uh, working on this uh, in this video so uh, you went over to the builder and you first check that okay what is the name of this component so this component is parent carousal okay so now you would be navigating back to your vs code and you would be uh, getting all these components and you would see that in your parent carousal let me just zoom a little bit so it is calling another component that is the child that is c carousal home and uh, this is the slides data that is the slider data that they are passing some custom height custom width auto scroll and height text uh, and other things are being passed into this uh, second component okay let's say the child component so this slides data is slides that is data this is the property in your child okay and this slider data is a property in your parent uh, file okay custom height and width so these are also uh, present in your child component whereas the value is passed from the parent component itself so uh, now we what would be looking is we would be looking at the javascript code that how uh, the things are being rendering uh, so let me come over to this javascript part so guys as you could uh, see from here this is your lwc part uh, in which what we could see is this is a slider image one so this is a link to some image this is the slider link uh, for the first one same for second third and fourth so automatically what we are seeing is uh, there are four images and four links okay so they are making use of four items and uh, okay and we could see this slides data and that is this slider data right and where we could see this slider data is we have created a getter in here and uh, in this getter what we are uh, returning is an array of object in which we are adding one two three and uh, four all the four items with their image name uh, like for example uh, we are at our first image so uh, for the image we are having this dot slider image one the link is this dot slider link one and the heading and the description so these two are the additional fields that we are passing in here so that uh, it could be easy for us to uh, work on the component and rest it is uh, the same as it is and there is nothing else that is being passed in here so now coming over to our html of our child uh, it is better that first we should look at uh, the javascript part okay so what we could see is the, there are the api parts so the api parts are for all the things like this slides data so uh, we could uh, see a thing of called slides data that in here we could see a getter method defined by the api and the associated setter method okay for the associated other items we could also see the height slide number uh, custom width and custom height that is uh, provided from your parent the auto scroll functionality as in if you could see here auto scroll so uh, for the beginners 
see there is a uh, if you could see auto and scroll there is a uh, hyphen between the two so why it is that because in our child what we have defined is we have defined this scroll with capital s okay so uh, that's why uh, in our uh, parent we have uh, uh, added this by a hyphen and small letter that is s accompanying uh, the things okay so now let's move over to the uh, parent to now the child one okay so uh, this is your uh, thing okay from parent the main part that is to be taken into consideration is this slides data everything is coming into this slides data so uh, what is this we have created this uh, slides data and it is returning this dot slides so everything is coming in this array from there also we are getting this um, array of object and in here we are catching this in array uh, variable and in the setter part where the uh, actual logic resides is uh, in our slides what we are doing is first we are um, moving and iterating over our data so data is the thing that we are passing in the setter method and uh, in our map function we are passing the slide and the index as i so we are checking if the current index is zero so we are uh, returning the entire slide that is the entire array object that is the image link heading and description this part along with the other things like index is i plus one the slide class and the dot class so in terms let us say these are the four things so now your entire uh, array would become of five six and seven total seven items uh, including the index the slide class and the dot class okay and if your index is i i variable is not zero then what we are doing is we are just returning the things and we are just modifying our style class okay that is the fade and slds hide so that is being entered in our slides data so from this what we could understand in here is that now our uh, array of object from 4 it became to 7 the size became to 7 okay so now if we uh, it's the better time to see the html also so uh, see we are looping over the slides data and for item slide okay so before that what we could see is there is a style of max width and max width is being passed from our parent so uh, if we could see is the custom width that is 100 percent and in here this is the max width that i created a getter so i don't need to create a uh, separate kind of api variable for this because i just created a getter for the max width okay so uh, in this what i am doing is um, i am using a special syntax that is uh, i am using the back back ticks the width and i am dynamically passing this dot custom width in this so what would it be like is style is equal to width colon 100 percent so it would be uh, as this okay same goes for your height right so uh, now moving further in our html part what we could see in here is uh, we are iterating over our slides data uh, the total eight items so a href is the slide dot link so slide dot link is we are getting from the parent only if we could see the parent see this is the slide and this is the link so we are directly referring the link and since we have optimized uh, this setter so what we are passing the key as slide dot index and we are also passing the slide class see slide dot uh, description uh, the slide class and the associated css classes okay so this is in here and if we could see is div if false handle slide text so if we could see in our parent there is no such property called handle slide text while there is it is in here so what it would be it would be in your slide uh, child part and see what we are doing is by default we are setting this to false okay 
so if we are setting this to false what it means is uh, it means like if this is false that means false false so this thing would uh, show up and we would be uh, displaying the slide heading and the slide description okay thereafter we are also using uh, the two buttons that is uh, the previous and the next button that is displayed from these two lines and these are also coming dynamically from our javascript controller and we, we are checking that if our hide navigation dots so this is also uh, in here no this is not from the parent this is in the child only so hide navigation dots uh, okay is set to false so if this is set to false then uh, we could see our associated uh, child classes and that is uh, a template runs over again the slide data this is the same as the above loop but the above loop ends in here this is a new loop right and in this uh, what we are doing is just we are checking the uh, class that what is the associated dot class and uh, we are referring this in our js via this data id so we are using data id and on click of this should be show slide so uh, what are what am i talking about is so these are your dots and on the click of all these dots you could see the color change see simple on the hover also right so uh, this is your slide dot dot class and this is your show slide event that is uh, based on your on click behavior so what it is being done in here is so let me just uh, zoom this and in this what we are calling is uh, we are using a variable that is slide index and we are getting the data id from uh, the html that is from here that is the key as well as we have already set the data id in here also so what am i doing is uh, i am going in here i am getting the slide index let us say there are four four uh, four images i am using and i got the image as one so i am uh, taking this and passing this into my another method that is handle slide selection and what this method is doing is so this method is a very crucial method which is taking in an in index so let us say my index is 2 so uh, is 2 greater than slide dot length and the slide dot length is obviously 4 uh, because we are using 4 images in here ok see you could also count from here 1 2 3 and 4 and uh, so it would not go into this and if it is checking that the slide index is less than 1 no it's not so else what it would be doing is this would be using assignment operator and the value of index is being passed over to the slide index variable that is defined globally outside this function right then again over we are using our application on this slide only so that is our array so what we are doing is we are checking uh, and creating a map of the slide and we are checking if the slide index that is in here that we are receiving from here from handle slide selection is same as the slide index if it is uh, same as the slide index then uh, we would be showing our slide class c sldf show it is written and we are adding the dot class also that is the dot and active and whereas if uh, it doesn't matches the above criteria we are just simply hiding our class so basically this is the difference in here so from all this what we could analyze is in a couple of minutes we analyze that okay this is coming from a uh, parent component that is parent carousal this is calling another component that is carousal home in which the entire logic resides the original array um, data is coming from the parent carousal with four uh, sub uh, items whereas in the child part it becomes to six uh, moreover the associated classes are also add, being added in here dynamically 
and the associated operations are also performed uh, in this way so guys i hope uh, you got to know about the things like the in and out of the things and after that the output goes in this way so this is not a very difficult code to create also you could get this code easily on the internet and by making some little tweaks you would be able to make this uh, working also uh, if you find any issues uh, rest you could update your images from here or what you could do is like uh, um, the best practice is like you could store these images in some static resource from where we, they could be uh, gathered in here because when you would be dealing with uh, this na what you would be getting is you won't be getting this interface directly you would be getting an error in your experience builder that would be saying that the image url is not uh, uh, supported and it is blocked by csp so what you would be going is settings security and privacy and in here there would be option to add uh, to allow these uh, image urls you would just be allowing them and your uh, uh, function or the carousal part would be working perfectly so this would be a working demo for your carousal part see my uh, index is also increasing and i click on this so associated uh, page is also getting rendered uh, i hope uh, this video uh, from this video you got a idea like how things are working and how to debug the code okay how to debug someone's else code when you are working or when there is a requirement right so uh, thanks for watching and if you are having any concerns or queries do let me know thanks a lot Bye.